Hello, this is the third uh, video in the Living Love Word uh, series that I'm doing. Um, I'm doing it a series because someone said you should make this a series. So in this one, it's going to be called Love is a Mystery. Living Love Word, Love is the Mystery. And so I'm going to ask you a very serious question. <laughs> Why do you love anyone? Now, I think that many of you will have some reasons why you love someone. And I'm going to submit to you that those reasons are probably not as true as you think they are. Uh, a while back, Jonathan Haidt wrote a book called The Righteous Mind. And in the book, The Righteous Mind, he basically said that people feel a certain way about something and then they make up reasons for why they feel the way they feel. They make up justifications. But the reality is that they already have this predisposition or they're raised to believe a certain thing or whatever the case may be. And that that's what, why do they believe what they believe? But they tell themselves a story about why they have their certain convictions or whatever the case may be. I submit to you that most of us have no idea why we love people or anyone for that matter, but we come up with reasons for why we love people. Now, one of the things about this loving uh, or living love with series is I'm trying to get us to examine the reality of love. Uh, a lot of us talk about love. We say what things like I love my car. I love bacon. I love like whatever we throw the word out. And in the English language, there aren't a lot of different uh, words. We just say love. It's not like how it was in Greek where they had eros or, ph or philos or any of those other words that would help you understand what you mean when you say the word love. We just use it across the board, like the commercial. Everyone was it Subaru. It's something about love and Subarus or love is what makes a Subaru. We just throw love all over the place. But the reality of love, I mean, like the abiding reality of love, that which makes the world go round, that which causes all things to be all those things completely mysterious. I'll tell you right now, if someone said to me, Pedro, why do you love your kids? I would say I have no idea. I don't know why I love my kids. Why do you love your wife? Why do you love your neighbor? Why do you love yourself? I truly don't know. Um, I'm just being honest about it. And I don't think that you know either. Now, maybe you might feel like I may be off base with that. But really, when you think about it, um, especially when we're talking about this idea of unconditional love, which most of us, most of the people I've met, let's say, I'm not going to say us because I don't know everybody, but most of the people I met, they desire, they long for, and they believe on some level that they should receive unconditional love. What is unconditional love? It's love without conditions. And yet we get in relationships of every kind. And when people don't match the conditions that we say, which are actually the reasons why uh, we say we love someone, we start to feel sometimes the opposite of love for those people. And yet we still desire and want unconditional love for ourselves. And I think it's a, a lot easier to just not know why you love people and just accept that you do. And uh, anyone that you love in your life, don't try to come up with a reason because if they don't live into that reason or say you make up that reason and then that person knows, OK, they love me because I provide uh, financial resources to the family. Now, if you lose your ability to provide those financial resources, love's gone. Or I love you because uh, you make me feel good about myself. Now, I don't make you feel good about yourself anymore for whatever reasons. OK, now the love is gone. What is that? I'm more subscribed to the uh, undefined, unreasonable, uh, mysterious love. One of the things it says in the Christian teachings uh, is that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, which basically means when we were like going in the wrong direction or whatever, the direction that least served uh, love, we were still loved, you know, and we were loved with uh, a love that according to the tradition, uh, Jesus said, there's no greater love than to give one's life for one's friends. 
And so under that precept, which this is something that existed pre-Jesus, this idea of giving one's life for one's friends was the ultimate um, sign of love. It's saying that this person performed the ultimate sign of love while people were actually doing the opposite of uh, loving things. But because this person was going loveward, they were going toward love, the conditions that most people would hold that would make someone worthy of love, this person didn't hold people under those conditions. Basically, Jesus loved people for no reason. And so from my perspective, the greatest love that you can have some for someone is to love them for no reason. It might not make sense to you, but when you start thinking about the real whole romantic thing, no offense to romance, I know it makes a lot of money for a lot of people and it makes some movies pretty interesting, but when you get caught up in this whole narrative of earning love because you do something, uh, some grand gesture that makes the person feel good about themselves. And then if you can't keep it up, then the person doesn't feel good about themselves. Or if you don't do the thing that they think you should do when you should do it, they think that means something. All of these things, all these conditions, good Lord, it makes it complicated. And let's be honest. It's probably why I wasn't that great at, <laughs> great at dating and people broke up with me because I have subscribed to it because I used to be in relationships with people. And they were like, Pedro, why do you love me? And I'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't sound awesome. I'll tell you right now. I know it doesn't sound awesome, but it's true. And some people used to tell me, well, I feel like you love me the same as you love everybody else. I don't feel special in a relationship with you. And I would say, you know what? <laughs> I do love you the same as I love everyone else, but the love with which I love you is the love that comes from God. That was my perspective. And I'm like, there's no greater love than that. So since I'm loving you with the greatest love there is, I don't think that that's taking anything away from you. But because most of us want to desire to feel special, that's why we want reasons. Please tell me that you love me for certain reasons because if I'm the only one that can provide those things that make you love me, then that makes me feel, what is it? We talked about it a couple episodes ago. Makes me feel safe. And if, it feels, if I feel safe, then I can be certain that you will love me. And if I feel certain that you can love me, then I can love you. But the reality is life doesn't work that way. And so as we start to try to live more fully into our highest potential. And I'm saying we assuming that you want to live into your highest potential. You want to live into love's highest potential. We have to abandon some of those things that just make no sense, don't work. And most people, if you examine what we say, it does not even match at all. So my uh, advice to you and the advice I'm living to myself is to accept that you are loved with all the love that there is, the greatest love that there is for no reason at all. You can't earn it. And in my old tradition, they say you don't deserve it, which I think was kind of cold. But I think that the effect of saying you don't deserve it was to remind you that you didn't do anything to earn it. It was grace. You just got it. And I think that that's true across the board, that we are loved like completely unconditionally accept that love and live love word, you know, accept that the entire universe was created for you to experience this full love of your creator and that you are living love word and that it's a complete mystery. That love is a mystery. You don't understand it. You'll never understand it. The reasons that we make up for loving people are pointless. And I will say one other thing before I go. I think that a lot of times some of our more harsher expressions of uh, faith, I think that part of the reason why they're so um, harsh is because we are afraid of the fullness of love. And so we look for reasons not to love just as much as we look for reasons to love. We say, if you fall in this category, I love you. If you fall out of this category, I won't. We project that onto the creator because for us, it's just easier because love is so mysterious. We don't understand it. We don't know what to do with it. And yet it is the basis for everything that we do. And so just enjoy love. Just be loved, be loved and stop trying to figure it out.